Hello, everybody. How are you on this wonderful Sunday, March 26th? I had to look over, make sure I had the right date. Hello, everybody. I've not been busy like crazy, not at all. <laughs> but I'm really, um, I'm really proud of myself because I have been getting my stuff done just like I'm supposed to. So hello, everybody. Ha. Ah, uh oh. Oh. Oh, we're ta are we talking about the hurricanes down in Mississippi? That is so awful. I think some in Arkansas. The Hi, Marsha. Lisa's here. Charlene Lawson. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, she knows about going through hurricanes. Oh, my goodness. So, let's see. You've not been on September. September of 2022, because, oh, I remember that now. You're back in your house. She had to have her house, all the walls taken down because it flooded her house and outside of her house. Remember the pictures I showed you guys? A pile of all this beautiful antique and vintage furniture. The only thing she was left with, she had this shelf up nice and high in her living room full of red beautiful pottery that was okay <laughs> but if it, it had to be 10 feet off the floor before it was safe so I am so glad whoop, let me clean my glasses I'm so glad that you're back in your home now Charlene that has to be quite a quite an ordeal, an emotional and physical thing to go through because, oops, I got some, okay, <laughs> I'm doing pasanki, so I got some black wax on me, but anyway, oh, I'm so glad you are back in your house. Marsha, you know your hurricanes, don't you, hon? So, yes, yeah, all her stuff had to be dragged out to the front and all up and down the street were huge mountains of people's lives that had to be thrown away. So we're glad you're back in your home. Hi, Robin and Debbie's here. Ah, oh, I know that that tornado was massive. So... Uh, and Robin, how's your temperature today? The, the outside temperature. Charlene Piper is here. Did you get your package, hon? I don't even remember what was in it. So I hope it was something good. All I knew is I was getting that puppy. I've been looking at that thing for so long. So I was getting it out the door. Pat Fry is here. Oh, you got lucky. Pat, because, you know, any time Myrtle Beach could have gotten really whacked hard. So Cheryl Hogan is here. Oh, guys, it's so good to see you. Oh, Virginia, Carl Gallant. Oh, hi from Nova Scotia, Canada. It is so nice to see you. Welcome here. <laughs> Lisa bought another. Okay, I'm going to tell on Lisa. When Lisa was at Myrtle Beach Quilt Party, she had a machine that was acting up. And I said, oh, no, Lisa. She goes, oh, no worry. I brought three with me. Three? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? As hard as she works, she has a couple different jobs. Lisa can buy what she wants, I tell you. So good for you. What kind? Tell us what kind of machine it is because we love stuff like that. You know, we're too old, most of us, to have babies. So the somebody getting a new sewing machine is like a new child in the works. So, <laughs> all right, let's see. <gasps> Oh, that's good. Oh, Charlene, I'm so tickled that it's something you could use. Oh, that's wonderful. Alberta Powell, how are you, sweetie? 
So I need some more pictures from Miss Alberta. I don't know how busy she's been, but if you're not too busy, we love seeing your work, beautiful. So eight centigrade. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay, let me see. The Jazz 2. Ooh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. That's wonderful. Well, let us know. And, you know, send pictures of it, too. We'll post your baby pictures, baby sewing machine pictures. <laughs> so, okay. Well, look what I have been doing. I am completely packed except for my sewing machine. And um, I had to take, you know, my other sewing machine that had been acting up when I did thread painting. Well, what I it acted up again, even though I've had it to a shop four times since November. And I realized that somehow when you push the thread cutter button, it somehow grabs or tangles the thread and makes the bobbin case pop up. So I wrote him a long letter of this is what it's doing. And I'm hoping that he can figure something out. But um, anyway, but I figured while I go on a retreat, it's a good time to have a sewing machine fixed because I'm not going to, I can only use one machine. So um, I'm going to take my older Juki and she's so good. You know, she doesn't have the fancy bells and whistles, so she doesn't break as easily. <laughs> Some of us old fashioned things are, you know, we're better. We, we hold up better. <laughs> So anyway, but I've gotten a ton of stuff packed and you can see that that's my portable ironing board. I made out of a, a piece of plywood. Mark cut the plywood, cut smooth corners. Um, and it's a nice hefty piece of plywood. I covered it with cotton batting and then the Teflon ironing cover. And then I, got him to screw some fabric handles on it so it makes it easier for me to pick up because you know as we get older my hands are not as strong and as agile as they used to be and then I've got my paint tote I cleaned out everything in my tote and put back what I needed and oh over there is see those white bars sitting with the blue tape on them that's normally my design wall that hangs here, I'm taking it with me. And the cover I made like a pillowcase is right there. There, now I'm going to put my sewing machine in that. Then this is my little red wagon. I don't know what I would do without my little red wagon. And I have some show and tell things packed. And I have three bags of projects. So... I always say I'm not going to take too much this time. And then I see something and go, ooh, I might like to work on that. I always recommend taking at least one project more than you possibly think you could do. And I'll tell you why. When you go out of town like that, you might be surprised that you left an important component home. You can't manage to get it all you know and I make lists so I try my best but my daughter one time went to a retreat with me and she forgot something that she needed and it is miserable to sit there and not have anything to do so always can't take at least one extra project beyond anything you think you can do and that way and if you have room in your car, take a, a backup sewing machine in case that goes. But take things like plenty of extension cords. I have a reel that I can pull out. Let me see if I can find it. But um, I've got lots of things here. Okay. And I carry my own bottled water. But in like that, the bag, I don't know if you can see it now, 
Which way am I? I can't tell now. I moved it. Oh, there it is. Okay. That brown tote that I made for my ironing board to go in, I take my rulers and cutting mats in that so that they can't get damaged. That ironing board's so stiff because you don't want them in anything that's going to flex. Here is the best thing I ever bought. And it is a real, got it from the hardware store. I've got my name. I put my name on everything if I go to a class or a retreat. And it has the four cords. The thing I like, I mean, the four plug-ins. The thing I like, it has an on-off on -off switch. So I plug this into the power strip that they run right to your table. I plug this in, then I can run everything I need off of this. If I need even a little bit more, as long as it's not drawing too much power, I can use a short extension. But I wanted to, the thing I like is when I leave for sewing at that time or that day, I just turn this button off and I know everything, including my iron is turned off and nothing can do damage. And this I also like because it's a real system. So it's got a very long cord and you just wind it back up. So that's been a great thing to take to retreat. I also take bottled water um, because I don't want my tummy getting upset drinking different water. So anyway, now let's see. But I, I'm trying to think if there's anything. So I've got a design wall. I'm going to take my best sewing machine chair. I'm taking a really good cushion so that I don't, my hips don't get any more sore than they already are. Um, so design wall, cushions, and rulers, cutting mat, rotary cutter, uh, new rotary cutter blade in it, or just take a pack of the replacement blades. And then I've got my pro projects that I'm taking. And little things like one of the ladies wrote an email and said, if anyone has extra spools, empty spools. Well, I was running a cord of spools down off my lampshade there. And she, they, her church makes, um, or her group makes busy pillows or busy blankets for dementia patients. I said, I've got plenty. So I'm taking my empty spools. So anyway, but um, I try to make sure everything is packed in a way that I can go set up and then repack Everything has a place, and I know where the place is. The older I get, the harder it is to set up, the harder it is to clean up, to pack up. So, hello! And you notice, even though I packed my design board, I put our Ukrainian, Ukrainian, Ukrainian flag up right there because we are still loving our Ukraine. And you might recognize this. This is an egg I made. And our Ukrainian friend, I wish I knew how to say their name, but Spetnana, did you know that Pasanki is a Ukrainian art form? It is the decorating of eggs using a batik type method is Ukrainian. So yay. And I want to also say another thing. Lisa has been the most darling person to have in our group. And she, the fact that she can speak to our Ukrainian friend melts my heart. How wonderful. Quilters are the best people. Oh, it's Svetlana. Oh, wonderful. I will try very hard to remember Svetlana. Svet Svetlana, I hope I'm saying it right, darling. But we're awfully glad to see you. So it is so good. Oh, Crafty Pat hasn't sewn anything in a long time. Her old singer was too heavy to pick up. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. In your sleep. Hey, you can't be to blame if it just happened when you were sleeping. <laughs> Pat, you cracked me up. You're so cute. So, uh, okay. Well, it's so good to see everybody. So I am going to be doing a little Pasanki with you. And um, 
And you know what's funny? Every year around Christmas time and again at Easter, I think I want to do a couple Pisanki eggs. Then after I do a couple, I go, okay, that's enough for six months. <laughs> it is so meticulous. And it's like, uh, and you know, I have the attention span of a gnat. So it's, it's a hard thing for a dab, let me tell you. Okay. Well, start off first. I've got a few things to show you. This is this week's nod to the 19th century. And this is this week's block. And I'm not sure, did I skip seven? I kind of thought I did seven. But if I didn't, I can come back and tell you. All right. I look at pictures. of. I found pictures at different sites of these blocks. And, oh, and remind me to tell you something about Svetlana. Okay, Svetlana. I hope I did it right, sweetie. So Virginia is your best friend of 56 years and lives in, that is a French word, Harve Boucher, no damage from Fiona. Hi, Betty Middleton. Man, I'm loving seeing everybody. Oh, uh, Lisa, thank you for joining our group. You are a dear. You are a dear. Mm. And um, so, oh, and I think she's 56 years old, Svetlana. Ah, uh, it is so nice to see you. Okay, so when I see it, I, for the for this block, which is, is kind of, uh, I call it a nod to the 19th century, because I got these beautiful fabrics that remind me of the French general fabrics. They're from Three Sisters. They're beautiful. And I wanted to do something a little old-fashioned. And so what I do is I find a picture of a block I love, and then I deconstruct it. I've been watching Top Chef, so <laughs> I deconstruct it. And so what I do is I sit down and look and say, how is this made? And sometimes they stump me a little. Most of the time I can figure it out. And then I, t I go on my EQ8 and I reconstruct the block on there, the size I want. And then I, um, and then I click when I've got it all right. Then I click on rotary cut and it tells me what size everything needs to be. Now I got a little stumped on this one. For some reason, I thought there were quarters or half square triangles in the corner, but there's that's that's too hard of a way to do it. So I have the instructions I will post on the site. But the main thing to remember is the center block is fussy cut like I try to do, and that's four and a half inches. These little side blocks are two strips of two and a half inches by four and a half inches, okay? Two and a half by four, two and a half by four. And you have your background on these outer edges and then the nice contrast here. Now, so now you know it's pretty easy to do these and these. Now, how do you do that corner block? What you do is you take one of each of your dark, because I made mine kind of scrappy. You take one four and a half inch block of your dark, which in this case for me was red. Then what you do is you cut background squares that are two and seven eighths inches. I tried cutting two and a half and it made them a little bit small and hard for it to go all the way into the corner. So two and seven eighths if you can bear it. Two and three quarters maybe. Maybe two and three quarters is, is easier. And you just take the cut squares of your background. And I wanted all of this to be the same background and all of this to be the same background. So I had to cut four squares of this background and four squares of this background. And then you either draw a diagonal or you iron diagonal. 
and then you sew them on opposite sides of your red. And pay attention. If you want to do like I did and have this touch here, then make sure you get these on the correct side because you want this red to point out at an angle. So you got to kind of think about it a little bit. This is when I take and lay things out and make sure that I'm looking and placing carefully. Okay, so this is block eight. Block nine, I'm still working on, but we will have that next weekend. I'm taking all of this with me to go to retreat so that I can work on it there. I think I know what I want my sashing and border to be like, so I'll be working on it there. What I did is took a heavy piece of cardboard from a calendar and then I laid all of the pre-made boards on it, the pre-made blocks on it, took my stapler and stapled it onto the cardboard. And now, because I didn't want to fold them, and they are 12 and a half inches, 12 inches finished. And so that's kind of tricky to, I, I've got them, you know, I starch my fabric. And once you kind of fold them or bend them, then you have to iron them again. And I didn't want to do that. But anyway, I've got all my fabric packed with me. Oh, that just reminded me. I hope I took an extra of the background. So because I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I don't want to tell you yet because I want to come home with part of it made so you can see, is that what you like? So, okay. Oh, wow. Good job. You finished three UFOs. Yes, between Pat and her husband, they had terrible COVID. And I owe her a covered bridge photo that I am going to do, even if she has to come down here and bonk me on the head. But all right. So now I showed you that. Then the other thing I wanted to show you is... I showed you this last time, but I'm going to take it with me because I never know what kind of project I might feel like working on when I go to retreat. Because it kind of, the nice thing about going to a retreat is you kind of get to decide, what do I feel like working on? <laughs> okay, hold on. My, these are my little floss these are my little flosses and I love these variegated ones I use them for the tails on my hens but here are my prosperity hens I showed you briefly last week I just took and made my own I looked at them online and then I made my own little pattern okay and believe it or not this is the tail and this is the head. So the tail's fatter than the head. And then I just hand stitch them, leaving a little opening near the bottom. And then I stuff them with scrap batting. And then I took and used some heavy double thickness sewing thread. I was hoping to put a wire through them. But the, I packed the batting in to their bodies so good that the wire wouldn't go through. And then I have some cute little bohemian type beads that I strung between them. Now, if you look up prosperity hens, the most of the commercial ones you can buy um, are made by people in India. And they're smaller and the beads between them are smaller. But that's okay because you know me, I kind of like doing things big. But look at these really cute brass little, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a real bell. And they're tiny. I mean, look, my fingernails are dyed, but look at the size of that little bell. It's amazing. Little brass bell. So each one has a little, uh-oh, this one doesn't have a breast bell for its nose. Well, I'm bringing some extras. And then I ordered a just real bohemian looking 
um, bell for the end, but I'll probably work on adding more to this when I'm gone. But if nothing less, I'm going to pin it to my design, my movable design wall, and then I can show people what I've done. But these are just cute. And I just love stuff like this. I'll, you know, I'll hang it somewhere where every time I see it, it'll make me smile. So, okay. So I wanted to show you, I'm also taking that and my scrap fabrics and my thread and an extra bell. And I compressed. It's amazing how much stuffing I got in this bag because I compressed it so I could fill it as full as possible. So those are my prosperity hens. It's an Indian tradition that wishes a family or new couple um, all good things. But I just thought they're beautiful. We went to Asheville, North Carolina, which is a real bohemian type city, and <laughs> saw a shop. And my daughter said, and it had all kinds of stuff like that, all hand done, all stuff from all over the world. My daughter said, you found your mothership. <laughs> I got so tickled, but it was like, oh boy. I mean, all kinds of candles and mosaics and all that good stuff. So that was fun. Okay. I think what I'm going to get ready and do right now is show you some Pasanki. And I couldn't get it done before the show. So I decided to bring it down and we can chat and do some of this together. So if Jody is here, I think I saw her here. She'll be really proud of me. Because I'm putting down my protective mat so that I won't mess up my ironing board. Because I'm using dyes. And these aren't food coloring. These are the real thing. Real dyes. Oh, okay. Oh, and I have my, uh, over here, I have my quilt contest quilt laid out to take because I've got to put a four inch folded sleeve, hanging sleeve on the back and a label. And, oh, I know what I wanted to show you. I was watching, I forget what channel I was watching, but I saw they were using what's called stained Brighter Colors on Fabrics, Stained by Sharpie. And they are a permanent marker that has a tip that's like a brush. And so I'm going to use this to color in my label. I'm very excited about that. But I've got to look up and see, what do you put on a label for a contest quilt? So how did the elephant come out? It's laying right over here. After I do the Pasanki, I'm going to show you that. So thank you for asking. That was very good. So energy, I don't, I don't have energy. If you could see me, I'm a mess lately. I have had a problem. I don't know if any of you know this, but I had it after I came back from Myrtle Beach Quilt Party where it's hard for me to stand straight upright. My buttocks and upper thighs cramp. The muscles cramp terribly. And I don't know what I've done. So I told Mark, it's now been bothering me for two months. So when I come back from the retreat, I'm probably going to have to call the doctor and uh, go see her and say, what's going on? And I'm hoping that it'll just take some physical therapy. But, oh. I tell you, at times when I've had muscle problems or back problems, physical therapy has been the best. All right, so here's what I've got for some Pasanki. Okay. Oops. What happened to, what did I do with that one egg that I showed? Oh, here it is. Okay. I didn't want to crack this one, but here is a completed egg. 
Let me give you a little brief. Um, when do I leave for the retreat? Tomorrow morning. And Mark's going to help me load everything. And he said he's actually kind of looking forward to just having a little time here by himself. So, um, you know, it's kind of nice to have your own. You could eat when you want and do what you want, all of that good stuff. But anyway, so it started with a white egg, okay? White egg. And then I took a pencil and I dissected the shell. In fact, I don't have all of the wax. There is a little bit of wax right there. But anyway, I, di I took a pencil and the best kind are mechanical pencils because it makes a thin line. And I dissected the shell with pencil and drew my pattern out. Then I got my Kitska, which I've been using this one right here. And I used beeswax. Beeswax is the best. And everything that I wanted to stay white, I ran the white the 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 beeswax over and anywhere the wax is just like batik anywhere the wax touched it stayed white and then i dyed it light blue an aqua type blue right there and then after that was dyed and i dried it i took and put wax where i wanted it to stay the aqua and then for the last thing i did a dark blue actually i did four four times. This, this is a dark blue and dark blue, but in here is black. My last coating, I put black on it. And then I took and put olive oil in a baggie and rolled the egg in the olive oil, then held the egg beside the flame and melted the wax and rubbed it off and rubbed it off and rubbed it off. Thank you, Lisa. And then what my final thing is I'll take, you can't, don't use water base, use an oil base sealer and like, like you would use on a wood floor, um, a varnish type thing and seal the egg several coatings. And that way it becomes a little more sturdy. But I have not blown this egg out yet. And I'm a little nervous about that, but I'm going to do it eventually. All right. So here are the two eggs I'm working on right now. And these three are going to be it for me for this spring, I think, because it's a little bit tiring. All right. So let me bring this down. Okay. All right. So what I've done is these are going to be multicolored. So these have gone through a yellow dye, then an orange dye. The orange is like right here. And then a red dye and now a green dye. So that's what both of these. Oh, and just to tell you. Since I did so much research on doing a better Pasanki egg, I found that before, if you go from red to green with Pasanki, it will turn muddy. So what I did, they said use bathroom cleaner, anything with bleach in it. I sprayed, so I, these were all a dark red, right? You can see the dark red that got saved with the wax. Well, the whole egg was dark red. I spritzed the bleach cleaner on it, and then it went back to white. So now, hi, Mitty. Now I can, um, then I could, because of that, I can go back and dye green, and it won't turn muddy. So now I'll go green, then blue. If I wanted to go purple, I would do that after blue. And then the final would be black. So, and I have a very thin needle right here on my wax that sometimes the Kitska gets um, blocked up. Any little imperf imp imperfection. And so if it gets blocked up, I can stick that in the bottom hole, unblock it, 
And I didn't know about getting a tool to unblock it. And I would just know sometimes I would have a terrible time. Um, a terrible, terrible time getting this done. And I wondered, oh, okay, you can see the flame. So now that I've gotten this Kitska, it's got a little brass barrel. Now that I've gotten this nice and heated, what I do is I just rub it against my beeswax. I just touch it to it and the beeswax melts and goes right in. Then I warm it back up. And before I use it on the egg, I wipe off the excess so it won't blop. Here is a blop. You don't want blops like that. So now I'm going to come in here and decide, hmm, what do I want to stay green? And so I'm going to do a, a little circle around this. Let me bring you in closer so you can see. Because it's kind of small work. Okay. Whoops, can't quite see the... All right. Well, just know that I'm going and holding it to the candle and then coming to the egg. And I'm going to shave this green around the red on the egg. Okay. All right. Now, I think I'm going to put green dots in this right here. And you just kind of decide, you can plan it out ahead or decide as you go. I'm going to one of these three circles, I'll make green. I'm not going to do violet, but I may, um, oh, I forgot to do red around this. Now, I forgot to leave the red on this one last time. You can fix it by going in and trying to leave some um, red now. But it's whatever works good for you. Now these, I have, this is a little bit of orange. I'm going to fill in the background of all of this. I've already done orange. I've already done um, white. So now I've decided that this little square, and the Kitskas can be different sizes so that you can fill in a little easier. But I'm just going to fill all this in. And if you notice, a lot of times this yellow beeswax will turn dark, and that's because of the soot from the candle. And I like it when it turns dark because when it does that, it is easy to see where you've put your wax. Okay. Let me see. I think these centers will be green. You have to kind of decide as you go. Because once I put this in a different color, like next will be blue, then it's too late to go back and add anything else. So, all right. I'm going to just try to see if I can get some of this put on so I can put it in the next color and you'll get to see how this works. Okay. All right, so I'm going to quickly go over this. I don't want too much green, but I want enough green to make it a little exciting. So i got to remember these middle circles of these three little circles. Whoops, sorry, I was a little off screen. Okay, and then I go around. Whoops, okay. I go around these. And now I'll have yellow, red, and green on these circles right here. And feel free to chat during this part. I know it's about as exciting as watching paint dry, but I thought you kind of might like to see 
what goes into making one of these eggs. And please understand, I am a total beginner. So I am not as talented as some of the ladies you can find on, um, on YouTube. They do amazing work. Amazing. Okay. So whatever I want to stay green, I just color that in. Okay. Any? Oh, I know. Aren't eggs? A... Oh, hi, Laura. Eggs are really, really, really cool. Oh, you know, I there are so many things I'm interested in, and it's like, well, if you're gonna do it, you better get busy because you only get one go round and. So let's make it count. And uh, there's so many things I'm interested in. And Lisa and I are, was it Lisa? No, wait a minute. hold on. Who? Oh, Carol. Carol and I have talked about doing some Bob and Lace. So that would be a whole lot of fun. All right. So now I'm just going to finish these last couple. I might not be able to drop it in the blue dye if I can't get this part done. But um, I wonder who's messaging me. But it's kind of relaxing, but honestly, it's so particular that it's really tricky. And if you were to see Ukrainian women do this, they have probably been doing this since, you know, they were just young. And so it's second nature. For me, this is all tricky. But um, let me put, I'm going to put some more beeswax in this. Let me bring you up so you can see that. So each, whoops. Let me bring this back out. Okay. So I hold the Kitska right at the edge of the flame here. Then it's nice and hot. So when I put the beeswax up to it, it just kind of melts right into the little pot there that holds the wax. Now they make amazing electric kitskas, but I can't justify that when because that, what that means is I wouldn't have to keep stopping and putting it in the flame. But I can't justify spending that kind of money. So, oh, here we go. That started to, that started to run out. Sometimes when you get it a little too warm, then the color will just kind of run out. I think I picked up the wrong egg. I've got to come back to this one. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm like, I don't remember working on this one yet. Okay. So let me come in here and get some of these done really quickly. we got to move on, do other things. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> that scared me. I saw something move. And it was just my little beeswax. And you can buy a, like a one pound block of beeswax that'll last forever. I use, uh-oh, I got it a little warm. Do you see I just did a blop? Not good. Now, I kind of, I just kind of put it back in the cup. But unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. It is blopped. That's that's done. All right. So now, what was I doing? I'm trying to remember. I think I was going around these and doing a layer of green. Going around this, doing a layer of green. Just make sure before you spend all this time on an egg, really, you got to wash the egg and 
You can put a little bit of dish soap and put um, put some vinegar in the water and you will get a very clean egg. Make sure your hands are very clean. Any oils will keep the color from coming through. I mean, yeah, we'll keep the color from sinking into the egg like it's supposed to. All right. What? What? I forget now what. Okay. I think I was working on these. Okay. Oh, and I think I said I was going to keep green in the middle of these. But I, I, the only reason I show you these things is just to show you some of the amazing things that are out in the world. There are so many things to do. I like filling in all of that at once. So I don't care if it blops now. Oh, and I've got to go to these middle circles. Don't let me forget the middle circles. Okay. And you can go online and find all kinds of um, patterns. You can find some excellent books. And you can find patterns on Pinterest. And it, it is very meticulous. The, the, I love this part. I love applying the wax. Doing the drawing gets old. But I love the peaceful process of this. Now, I was as I was telling you, when you finally, the final color, doesn't have to be, but it's usually black. And that finishes it and gives it a really nice contrast. Really, really nice contrast. And so that's usually the final color. And then what you do is then let that color dry. And then you roll the egg in olive oil. And I did it. I didn't, I don't like anything oily or greasy on my hands. So I put the, a little olive oil in a baggie. Then I put the egg in the baggie and roll it around in the olive oil and then take it out and put it on a paper towel to hold it. And then don't get the paper towel into the flame. But when you put it, you never put the egg on top of the flame. You put it beside it. Because if you put it on the top, unfortunately what you're going to get is um, a burn or a smudge. You don't want that. So now let me see. I did around there. I'm just kind of, you got to go in and double check because once I dye this blue, it's too late. So I'm just going to put a little bit more color into some of these. I'm going to put just a little line. Instead of doing a whole section, sometimes I'll just put a little, like I want a little bit of this green right near this red and white. And maybe I'll do a few little dots in these. But I like sometimes I'll, put on a TV show or a movie and just kind of relax and do this. Mark always worries because I sit in my recliner with the candle and he is sure that I'm going to set fire to the house. But so far, so good. But I like having my feet up. I'm glancing back. So if you get, if you get, horribly bored or if you have a question just give me a holler and I will keep glancing I love it like the one day that my sound didn't work which we fixed that problem 
but I loved it because I saw them say, oh, she'll look at, she'll look up at the screen in a moment. <laughs> and I thought they know me so well. So y'all are, y'all are so good. So good to me. All right. I think I've just, whoop, my center dots. But when this goes into the final black dye, you better have it the way you want it, because that's it. The egg is kind of a universal symbol of life. So it's kind of nice to, that's why Easter, you know, rebirth, all of that. I just love eggs. I just think they're so pretty. Oh, here, when I was doing the red, I failed to do enough red. Oops. And that's, you know, you, you the, the professionals get used to really going over their egg very carefully and making sure everything they wanted done is done. Because once you want, once you have, you can even go and touch up until you put the wax on. Once the wax goes on, that's it. That's the color you're going to have. Okay. Some people try scraping off the wax. It doesn't really work. Whoops. I got a little bit of the, be careful. I was not looking when I put my Kitska over and I got a little bit of the um, wick on the Kitska. All right. I think I'm going to be very brave and say, I think I've put the, I think I have put the wax everywhere that's green. So now... I'm going to come over here. Let me move this. Put this back here. Since I'm wearing a nice blouse and I don't want to mess it up, and I'm going to be very careful. Let me put this egg down here. I was kind of hoping we're going to move on to the elephant, but I was kind of hoping that over the period of time, I could do the last few steps and then show you. All right. So there, there we go. Now, let me get all of this. Put that there. Put this egg here. Here are the dies that I use. And I just found the supplies from, oh, wow. Please send uh, a photo of your egg. We would like to see. Oh, I would love to see. I would love to see your egg. So I was so tickled because I have loved this. I've been doing, playing with this stuff for years. And then I had forgotten it was Ukrainian. Well, the last couple years, the last year and a half that I have just been just so in love with everything Ukraine. It was so nice to realize. All right, so I'm going to carefully now move this stuff out of the way. Don't have anything near it that you don't want to be dyed. I mean, I know that I can be a little ditzy with at times, but it can really be a messy thing. So after it's done with the blue, then I put wax on the blue, and then I go into the black. So let me, I would love to see Smith Lana's, Smith Lana's um, egg. And, okay. Now, before I touch this white elephant here, all right, before I touch this white elephant, let me clean my hands. But, um... Okay, 
And the address to send me anything or to ask for a pattern or anything is out. Whoops. Hold on. Is. Whoops. Oh. Whoops. Oh, you are. I, our time to quilt at twc.com. And if any of you are fast typists and anytime that I mention something like that, if you want to type in the hour time to quilt at twc.com, feel free to do that. I would love it. Oh, the artwork lost in the war. Oh, you know, when you think back at World War One and World War Two and all of the art that was stolen or destroyed, and thank goodness now, um, there's a lot of pressure on museums to give back regional artwork to the people who deserve that, who owned it and deserved it, not who stole it or bought it. I had to get some water. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I couldn't, I never could quite get the perspective, the look of the elephant that I wanted. So I finally had to say, I'm going with this one. I have now put the huge, the big elephant. I've put it in my closet, put it away for another project because it's a beautiful drawing of an elephant. So this is better. This has better proportions. Okay. So this one's better. It's not exactly my drawing. And, but I can send you out the drawing and Hopefully you understand now. Thank you for who did the math for me. Was it Lisa? I'm not sure. But thank you for the math because it really helped to get, you know, go taller, Deb. Because the, the fold it into 16 equal pieces is a very good method. But you have to have the ratio of the paper drawing and the ratio of whatever you're putting it on. Whether it's a canvas or whether it's fabric, you have to have the ratio the same. So now I'm going to take this with me to retreat too because I want to show you what we're going to do with this. We're going to do fabric painting, and I'll probably use my metallics because I'm a nut about those wonderful metallics. But what we're going to do... is we're going to start marking. Now let me bring up something really quickly. Okay. Now I'm going to bring up a sheet I was working on with, well, I'm going to bring up the folder that I was working on that has the designs I want. Okay, and what I've decided is that the African patterns are so amazing. I'm going to work off of this one for right now. But all you have to do is go online and look up patterns for African fabric or just African fabric. And so what I'm going to do is this one is a good shape. So I'll come over, come down, back up, over, come down, over, back up, and come down. Okay. So I've got this. Then right down from this is a little diamond, and let me come back to my screen for y'all. I need to have, I, I've been working on trying to get a sheet printed out of all the designs so that I can see them. Hold on one second, I don't want to be away from y'all, but, okay, so this one, this design comes down like this. 
Oh, I see what it is. Okay. Goes down like this, like this. All right. And then inside it has like, in here it has a circle or a square, pardon me, a square. And then a square on point here and kind of you could call it a square diamond. And then there's a cross. And I'm going to draw this in a permanent pen so that you can see. Let me see if I can use an ink pen. I hate to use permanent, permanent. But, and so now I just do a bunch of these and then do the same Okay, let me come back to y'all now. All right, so I'm going to go over this with a permanent pen because remember, I'm going to take a thick black thread. I've already picked out my thread. This is going to, this project is going to take a little bit longer. Um, oh, Marsha, you're such a doll. I just love our Marsha. Okay. But this project is a good project for nighttime when you're watching TV, you're sitting in your favorite chair, um, because we can't paint until we have all the design put in, and then we have to quilt it. So remember, when we do one of these mandala-type portraits, you have to have your pattern first and then you come in and quilt it and after it's all quilted then you paint it and this is a little small I don't think I'm going to be able to paint this so you know what I'm going to do I'm going to come in here and make some bigger shapes a little bit. I'm going to kind of simple this down just a little. So here I'll put this because once it all gets painted, you know, once you get used to looking at a design, then I think you can do it. You, it, it, you can just kind of go off of what you think you saw all right, so I'm that's going to be that. Now, I think that's too little. So let me, I'm going to go back real quick to my inspiration. See if I can find a little bit bigger one. Oh, this is a pretty one. Okay. All right, so for down here, and these I want to stick by. For me, you can use whatever kind of doodle you want. But for me, I want to stick with um, African. Now, this is kind of cool because if you're a quilter, you know this kind of basic shape. Then come here with this, and this one has circles right here. And this can have lines through here. And then you would come and here would be another one like this. And I might put the circles over here and the lines this way. Okay, so you're just going to, you're making up. This one, I'm going to make this, it's almost like a paisley um, mark. And I'm going to bring this here, put the circles. And then the lines this way. Okay, so you're just going to, oops, I thought I was back with y'all. No, I wasn't. Let me pick out one more design before I go to the next place. Um, oh, that's cool. 
All right. So I'm going to finish filling this in, but let's go up here and do another band across here. This is his trunk. And in this band, I'm going to, I like that chevron. I'm going to do that chevron again and do a big chevron, do a smaller chevron, and then do a diamond. Okay, so we can do that with this one. Then let's make a section that goes like this. And let's do this pattern. Okay, let me come back to you now. Hold on just a second. Okay, there we go. Everybody still there? Y'all are so quiet now, it makes me worry. But with this one, we're just going to go in, do a smaller chevron, and then a diamond. Do a, a big chevron, smaller one, and diamond. Okay. Is there anybody still there? I want to make just somebody say hi or something to let me know you're still there. Now, then I'm going to, let me see. I think I'm going to come, well, let me go back up to this one. So since, this, since these go this way, oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now this one is going to go like this. Then this one will go this way. And remember, it with African, the reason these patterns are so popular with African fabric is they actually at one point used mud as a resist for the dyeing of the fabric. So that's where you get a lot of geometric prints that we have come to know as the beauty of African fabric. All right, now to paint these, how in the world would you paint these? What, what I'm going to do is actually make them little looped lines like this. Okay, so I do the lines to kind of remind me which way it's supposed to go. And then here I make them like little worms and I'll, that way I'll know right where to paint my color. And I do the same here. But this is kind of this, the reason I'm calling this Zen Safari is because doodling like this is very Zen. Is it a roll call? <laughs> That's cute. Marsha, you're so cute. And, uh, okay, so now you, you get to see, and you can decide to paint a background, or you can decide to just to paint in these little areas right here. Now, I'm taking this with me, but I am not going to even take the paint, the fabric medium, I'm not going to take any of that because honestly, do you know how long it's going to take for me to do all of these patterns in here? This is going to be crazy. So, but it's going to be so worth it. And can you imagine when I have to go in and quilt all of this? It's going to take me a while to quilt all of this. But I think it's going to be worth it. But keep in mind, you might want to make much bigger patterns on yours so that you're not having to do all this tiny quilting. But this is called Zen for a reason. And it is because it's relaxa relaxation. It's just a calm, meditative Thing. So keep it 
keep that in mind when you're doing it. There's not a schedule that you have to adhere to. This is going to be running in the background while we do. Right now, I, I'm going to think I'm going to come this way with this one. Right now, I'm worried more about the nod to the 19th century block of the week than I am this. But this is just something that is kind of a long time project. And you don't have to do any of the things that you see me do. I love coming in with ideas to show you, but you pick and choose what you want. But see how we see how we're going to do segments. You can make your segments bigger, you can make your patterns bigger, whatever makes you happy. I'm going to come in here and do a whole diamond here with a line like that. So, whole diamond and I think I'm going to make it less intense. That way, when I come down here, here are my edge ones. There. So it's not all the same. All right. And then here. And make this all... Make it your own. But now, see, we've already gotten this much done. And while well, I've got to finish making these into little worms. But I thought, how cool to have an African elephant who then has an African pattern on him. Now, you can do an Asian elephant. You just have to make smaller ears. And you could use beautiful South Asian patterns, things, uh, Indian type patterns. There's so many ways. You could do a giraffe. You could do a zebra. Anything, you, the animal is an outline. I don't know if you noticed, but I did not, I did not um, put shadowing and all of that on him because that's not going to embroidered egg oh that's neat but um but you see actually maybe i will take my paints with me it didn't take me that long to do this did it so that's pretty cool all right but and and i would have these sections go some like the next one i think you know what? I'm going to put a curve in here. Let's do a curve right here. So the next section is going to be curved. So I'm going to do some curves, some straight, some soft geometric, some hard edge geometric, and just fill it in. I hope that gives you, let me bring it a little closer, but I hope that gives you some ideas. And I like actually using an ink pen if I feel bold enough because then it's easier than using a marker and it will last. It won't rub off. And you can use a mark like that because remember, you're going to take black thread and outline all of the stuff you draw. There you go. Now, let's say you don't want a quilt outline it. You just want to paint it and leave it flat. That's fine, too. Because here, we have no rules here. We make our own rules as we go. So, anyway, I'm curious to see what I find to do for his tusks. But, um, and then I've got to find a good name for him. I'll have to look up a, a really, an African name that means, you know, learned, wise, all that. So that's our African thing. Does that make any sense? And then what we do, I already have some of the stuff. The glove is because I'm going to need this glove if I do the quilting of all of this. 
Then here is my original drawing, and you see where I just folded it into 16 sections. And that's what gives me my 16 blocks, which makes it very easy to, to draw this onto any size fabric you want. So here are these. Then I have textile medium. I will mix this in with the fabric paint just because I want to have it flow really nice. You know, I want it to move really nice. And here I have a pencil with a white eraser. You need that to erase it. I have paint brushes. I have containers with which to um, mix the paint in with the textile medium. And the textile medium helps the fabric absorb the paint. So it becomes part of part part of the fabric. And it won't be as stiff either. So that's what we're planning on doing. And this is going to take a while. And you know what? It's okay. Last year I did 36 projects with y'all. Um, whether some of them were just, this is what I did at a class. So I'm going to show you how I finish it. And um it's okay for this to take a little while. You know, the slow sewing movement has really caught on. But what do you think? I, I think you'll like it. I think that once you get it all painted, and the good thing about having the different designs is you'll be able to use a lot of different color paints. The paint I got is a fabric paint metallic. I forgot the name of it. It's not down here. But it's on Amazon, and I think it was like $25, $29 for the box of paints. And that was my Christmas present. So I didn't feel guilty. <laughs> I didn't feel guilty buying that. So, okay. And hopefully you can still hear me talk. I think Mark's complex rubber band worked wonderfully. Okay. Oh. Marathi. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. It means wise man. Because this is our ode to Africa, which a lot of people say was the whole birthplace of mankind. And I believe it. All right. So now it's time for show and tell. And then after show and tell, I think, I don't think there's an, oh, I'll go back to the Pasanki and then I will say bye and go pack my car. <laughs> and let me tell you, when that car leaves, I take a cooler because I have to have my bag of ice to go with my 15 bottles of water and my two good thermal mugs because I drink water like mad. And I take a thing, a sack full of food snacks, mostly healthy. But a little few chips and a few little candy bars, but mostly healthy. Grapes. Oh, gosh, I'm taking grapes, bananas, and apples. And, oh, those Honeycrisp apples. They are expensive, but, oh, I love them. Um, but, anyway, I take snacks because the last meal, they give you two meals. A brunch that is from 1030 to 11. I'm lucky if I'm up and over there then. And then dinner's at 5 p.m. Well, that's about two hours before I normally eat dinner. So then I, I wanted to bring some like wheat thin crackers and some fig bars and some fruits and stuff to eat if I miss a meal or in between. So, but it's, I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to try to keep up with walking, not sit so long at a time because I'm having this muscle problem. I think I need to get as much exercise as I can tolerate. But anyway, well, let's go do show and tell because I'm thinking I might be able to get to the point with that Pasanki egg that I start the reveal with melting off the wax and show you all the colors that went into making it. Okay. So now let's go look at what you've been doing. Cause boy, I've had some good 
people sending pictures in. It's exciting. I love your work. And I do get ideas from y'all. I really do. In fact, um, Nazarene did a triptych, which is a work of art in three sections. And oh my gosh, beautiful. All right, so now let me, where is my mouse? Oh, it's way over here. I cleaned up things so well. All right, this. Let me make sure. Ah, here. Let me get this just right. Okay. Yay. Thank you, Mark, Mr. Magic Man. All right. Now, let's go to the folder of photos. While we're here, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, okay. When I was looking up the Pasanki, Pasanki, I, I never know exactly how to say it. Well, here's, if you really are good at it, this is what you can do. You notice how perfect everything is. Mine's hit or miss. It's going to take me years. But then here are the African designs that I was showing you that are just so amazing. And what I want to do so I don't have to have a computer open the whole time is I'm going to try to make a, a couple pieces of paper. Whoops, not that couple pieces of paper with the basic designs and a hint of the color so I don't waste so much ink. Look at these. I mean, there's so much we can do on this elephant. This would be really good on his um, trunk. That's beautiful. All right, let me show you some more. So there's all kinds of things you can find if you just look. Just would give you simple ideas. And don't make everything too complex. You know, have some areas that it's simple. Then you can have other areas where it's a little more complex. And, yep, I did, I did two of those designs. Look at all of this. This is all the stuff you can find online. So... Okay, and you, you know, you can try to find other things. I don't know what all I have in that folder, but anyway, okay, let me go. But do keep in mind, you could do an amazing lion. Isn't that beautiful? You could do a wonderful sea turtle. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? This is where I got the idea. I saw this in an online catalog. And this is a puzzle. You could buy this puzzle. And I said, ah, we could do this for our next fabric painting portrait. So that's where I got the idea. And then I thought, well, those are nice designs, but I think I want to really focus on African prints. So go look and see as many as you can find. But, you know, even there are just so many different things you could do. Look at this butterfly. But these all lend themselves for fabric painting. So that's wonderful. All right. Now, first person, Miss Betty. And Miss Betty shared with us a ribbon she got and it's a neighborhood ribbon this oh look at her quilt ribbons that oh and look at what she's been working on she's trying to finish sew it sewing it down to get it ready because she wants to enter it into a quilt show it is absolutely beautiful way to go beautiful beautiful work Look at her leaf pattern. Is this talent or what? I hadn't even thought of doing something like that on mine. Beautiful. And that's where you inspire me. Because I see things in here and go, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. So here is her background with her trees and things. Just beautiful. And then she would like to enter this. She wants to enter this in Houston. 
wow, I think it'd be great. She needs to win a ribbon with it, and then, she, then she'll be eligible to enter it in Houston. So way to go, Miss Betty. You go get them, girl. All right. Now, Miss Beebe. Miss Beebe sent us some wonderful things. Uh-oh, I might not have some of her new ones. If I have missed her new ones, I will show them next Sunday. I love her work. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Look at this. Isn't that sweet? Oh, I love that. This is beautiful. Look at the colors. Looks like a Persian rug. That is so beautiful. So this is why we love when you share your work with us for show and tell. And because the, the, what you do is stuff we might not have ever thought about or seen before. And we all can learn from each other's work. Miss Bonnie is doing black work. And this was back during the 1600s in England, the Jacobean time. This is beautiful. And look at the ruler down here. That will show you just how tiny. This square, this square right here, just over three inches, three and a half inches. Amazing work. Way to go, Bonnie. I'm so glad her eyes have gotten better. That is amazing. All right, Miss Brenda. Oh, you know what? I didn't get Brenda's new work. Darn it. She downloaded some amazing stuff. I apologize. I've been a little distracted. But if you're a member of our group, Sio, she has, you go to the photo section, look for Brenda's photo. She has downloaded some amazing stuff. And Brenda, honey, I'm sorry. I totally forgot. I even commented on her postings but i forgot to go get them all so please i apologize go to our group io site and look up brenda's folder i think she might have two so and if you notice some of your pictures might be missing um i think our group we got a little overloaded i don't know but a lot of our photos ended up kind of disappearing I don't really think I have, let me see if I have much of anything to show you. Um, mm, 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 mm. Where are recent photos? Where are, are, here we go. Um, no, no, I don't think there's anything new. You saw a little bit of snow the other week. All right, so now I'm going to go back. And Debbie... Debbie has really been getting settled into her new home. She's so happy with it. This is her beautiful new home. And then she's getting her studio set up. It's a loft studio. And look at her beautiful winter landscape from last year. That is gorgeous, Debbie. Look at all the stuff she has been doing. So I'm very happy with what She's, I mean, that, isn't that a good feeling when you, you have been without a home base for a while and you finally get moved back in and get your stuff spread back out? That is just wonderful. So let's see. And look at her. This is Debbie's. Look at her landscape. Aren't y'all something? I am so impressed with this, girl. That is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, now let's see where we're going next. And here is our Diana. And this is the portrait of her parents' dog she did as a gift to them. I know they love it. And the couch, look, look at her attention to detail. And that's beautiful. And I love this one. I always, these pictures are always in the way. But, oh, there they go. Now you can see, look at the shells and things that she hangs. Little beaded things she hangs from the bottom. And she, the top is a piece of driftwood. That is beautiful work. Look 
at all of her sand and the dimension. And she's even got a sailboat up here. Beautiful. Ah, oh, her sewing room is to die for. That is the most spectacular studio that I've seen. That should be in a big national magazine. And here's a quilt she made. I love 3D quilts. Her two granddaughters. Her ginger granddaughter made this one, I believe. And this granddaughter made that one. Wonderful. How exciting to bring your granddaughters into the fold. That's wonderful. Now, let me see. And I do apologize. I thought I was trying to be very... Oh, and that was Diana Bicknell, who did our wonderful um, snowman pattern this past Christmas. Uh, snow globe. Pardon me. Snow globe snowman. This is Diana of the Diana Sewing Adventures. And... I love, love, love. Look at this. One day I'm going to make a Lone Star and it's going to be a great one. But she's already done it. That is amazing. I love, I love this. It's a bag that she made for her granddaughter. Look at that. Isn't that terrific? I love that beach scene. All right. Now, mm -hmm. let me see. Lisa, Lisa has been so wonderful for making and testing out all of our blocks. And I love her attitude towards them, her use of color, the fun. I love them. I mean, it, th I need to see this because sometimes as quilters, one of the things I love about show and tell is sometimes we can kind of get set in our ways or not really think about it. And this shows a whole different approach to color. And it's so joyful. I love it. Look at that. Just beautiful. Look at her. She is the queen of pinks, let me tell you. That girl's good with pink. That's just beautiful, hon. So thank you for being our tester with the mostest. Now, let's see. Miss Mary. I'm hoping Miss Mary's okay because I'm trying to think. I don't think she lives near the tornado zone. At least I hope not. This is the cutest quilt, she said. This is one she made for a granddaughter. And it's called Dog the Bone Hunter, a play on characters. And you think, Bone Hunter? Where, those are all cats. Well, we will show you. Here's a sideways view so you can see all that amazing quilting. But look at the bottom right block. And she put snaps on the paws so that it can hold a three-dimensional bone. That is just the cutest Oh, my goodness, she's so good with that. So I love her sense of humor and her sense of fun with quilting. Here is a beautiful shawl that our Marcia made. Love it. And then Melanie. Well, got to always have our weekly fix of Willow photos. That is the prettiest little dog. And there she is waiting for them to come to bed. Here is a great quilt that she made for a church. And it's her own pattern. I love it. And then look at this quilt she's been working on. She found a pattern. And on the, the pattern picture, they showed how to make the quilt in black and white. And she said, you know what? I think I would like to make the quilt in blacks and whites. And she added a wonderful neutral tan as her accent color. And it works. It really works. And then I love the fussy cut sunflower blocks. How cute is that? This is her wonderful quilt she's done. 
and then here's her husband and a snow they had about a month or more ago and willow just loves i'll just lay here and take a nap in the snow too cute dogs like children remind us of the things that we adore in life that keep us ch childlike and full of awe i love this is pre-printed fabric she put a beautiful beautiful hummingbird on it i love her kitty cat beautiful work now look at these curtains she made they are so beautiful and remember she's from turkey and so the colors remind me of you know some of the wonderful architecture in turkey and she said she's had people come over to have their pictures made in front of those curtains they're just absolutely beautiful so way to go way to go it reminds me of kate jackson from the last little homely house when she makes her own curtains and they're just so pretty now i should have the latest from nancy lynn who is also so euphoria look at her beautiful work and i haven't asked her outright but the cane i looked up the cane that she uses in some of her photos and that means she is sight challenged which means she might not be totally blind but she's probably legally blind and i love her work love that she creates even with vision problems and, and she's something and look at this this it's wonderful to use as the binding or the border of that seashore beach landscape to use the roping that looks like marine roping. Isn't that cool? And just all of the things. In fact, you know what? I have pictures. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, I know where that's coming from. Okay. Okay. I have I have some information for another one. I see a blue ribbon right over here. Look at all of this work. Isn't it beautiful? So, there she is. I love that big smile with her quilt. It's so pretty. And this, look at that. Okay, so thank you for sending those to us, Nancy Lynn. And Nazarene, oh, I left this on Nazarene's because it is just so beautiful. I want to do another mosaic quilt, and that would be where you have a cream color flipper, and then you put these little fabric pieces on it. I just think that's exquisite. I love it. And all of her intricate quilting with the little bubbles. Nazarene's so talented. Okay, now, Miss Polly. And Miss Polly, I'm sorry. Oh, I did clean half of the room this week while I was packing my stuff because I want to have Miss Polly over and I would like for her to do a demonstration of weaving, loom weaving. So, and look at her. She's something else. She is very good. So we will work on that this spring. I will get to it. Sometimes I get myself in over my head and um, promise things that I'm not able to do, but I'll keep trying. I never give up. I love Miss Robin's sewing buddy. What a sweetheart. And look at this. This is where you take string and pull it through acrylic paint. And it makes these beautiful designs. And then look at this. I can't wait to try this one too. And I think she's used yarn and string. And maybe some artificial leaves that she then encrusted with the paint and the medium. It's beautiful. 
So I also will put this on our list, our bucket list. That's it, our bucket list. All right, and Miss Cheryl. Miss Cheryl sent this, and it says, This quilt has been submitted with seven others to the Ultimate Quilt Challenge. Well, let me bring it up so you can look at it while I'm talking about it. Um, they, her group, um, her group enters, the guild does this challenge every year. We pick the theme and size for our group. The AQS challenge is limited to eight quilts per guild. Eight people in our guild did a quilt this year, so we didn't have to vote on our quilts to get the top eight to submit. We have submitted our entries and are now waiting to hear if we get into the show. The Grand Rapids show is the only AQS show that has the ultimately ultimate quilt challenge. Our theme this year is flower power. Everyone else did flowers, but I only thought of a 1960s hippie van when I heard the theme. And she said she included a close-up of the window. She dyed the rickrack. Let's get this up. Oh, she's even got beading. Look at that. She dyed the rickrack, added the beads, layered the windows with printed sheer fabrics to give it depth used her scan and cut to cut all these flowers, used rulers to do the quilting, and she used two layers of batting silk cotton on the bottom and wool batting on the top. But isn't that fun? I love that she did this, and I would love to think that her group makes it into the show again because they have done it before. They're so talented. But isn't that great? We're so tickled with you, Cheryl. I love the joy in your project. So thank you for sending those. And I think, let me see, is that it? We had Robin and Cheryl. And I, I do, I am concerned that I missed more pictures than just Brenda's. And I apologize. I will do better. Please understand, it's been a crazy few weeks here. So, okay, let me try to get this back in the right position. Okay. Oh, anyway. And hopefully you're still there and we didn't lose sound and we're all still here. Okay. There's only glue, no yarn or thread. Oh my gosh, Miss Robin, we're going to have to get you to do. Oh my gosh, we're going to have to get you to show. No yarn or thread, it's only glue. The leaves are from a mold. I, I'm just, I love it. I love it. Oh, you should add Scooby-Doo at some point, Cheryl. But you captured that beautifully. I love it. I love it. I'm thinking of the 60s songs to go with it. Come on, get happy. You know. <laughs> Uh-oh. Alberta Powell just got a tornado warning for you. Take care. Get get in a safe place and stay there, hon. We, you mean too much to us. This crazy weather. Crazy, crazy weather. Well, everybody, I, oh, sorry. Let me go back to the Pasanke real quick. But we want to make sure that Miss Alberta stays safe. And let's see real quick. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it in the black dye or not, but let's see. But wouldn't it be great if somehow we could all live close enough to each other that we would get together and work on our projects? I, I think that would be lots of fun. So, okay. So now I've got to take this egg out of the blue. How's it looking? 
it's always hard when one of the when part of the egg floats because it doesn't get fully into the color. All right. Ooh, we got a nice dark blue. That stayed in there plenty of time. All right, I'm going to take it out. And you carefully tap, tap, tap it. Let me, let me get this back like this. Okay. You carefully tap it. You don't rub it because the eggs are still a little vulnerable to losing the dye. All right, so let me see how quickly I can now put the top on the blue. The blue is done. So black would be next. All right, so quickly, what did I do with... Hmm. Oh, here it is. Okay, whoops. Don't drop the matches, Deb. Okay. All right, so let me see. There's really, the good thing is that the more colors that you have worked on, come on, by the time you get, come on, ah, I can smell it. I hated when my parents smoked, but I love the smell of a match. Well, okay, let's try it again. And I'm going to get a light over here so you can see. All right. Aha, we got it. Okay. So here is my, I don't know what I did with my needle. Hopefully I didn't lose that. All right. So now I'm going to warm this back up. Wipe it off. And you notice I use a pretty thick pad of paper towels. Pretty thick pad of paper towels. Because when I go to wipe off this little kit scuff, I know it's hot. And I don't want to burn myself. That would just ruin. Oh, ooh, I thought I almost put that out. Burning myself would ruin my fun. All right, so now I'm going to come in here and decide what do I want to cover. And let me bring this down and zoom in a little. Okay. All right. And if I, by bringing in, I want to show you how often that I feel I have to warm up. Oh, this is pretty. So I'm going to come in here. I want to leave enough room for the black to accent things. Because the black really does add a wonderful background kind of color. So I've got to remember, yes, I want to fill in a lot. But I've got to leave room for the black to do its magic. And then I'll... It shouldn't take very long to get for it to sit in the black, and then we can do the reveal. That's always, to me, that is the most fun, is to do the reveal. Try to leave, leave room for black dye. And so just remember, wherever you see blue, you know that's because it hadn't been waxed yet. So wherever you want it to remain blue, then wax it. Okay. But the fun is when you're taking off the final, 
taking off all the wax and the colors will just pop. Okay. Oops. Let me put a little more beeswax in. And the reason I always wipe it off after I've just loaded beeswax in is because sometimes the beeswax will melt down the outside of it too, and then you're more likely to get it to run. This is not an expensive hobby as long as you know you can get beeswax relatively inexpensively. And then the kit scuzz, the kit stuff, maybe around $25. Um, so it's not... Now, with the price of eggs lately, well, okay, that's a little more expensive. And, you know, I have my own hens, but I haven't wanted to... Their, their eggs are green and brown, so I don't think it would make a... A very pretty background for an egg. I love the bright white that is revealed when this is done. And when I'm putting this wax on, I can go over. It's a lot easier now because I can go over the whole area. Even if it's already been covered with wax before, it's okay. And um, so it makes it a lot faster when you get to this stage. Let me see how fast I can try to zip through this because I would love to show you the reveal. That part is so much fun. And try to remember where you are at the egg so that you don't overdo it. Because sometimes I feel like, oh, did I just do that? Or <laughs> you have to concentrate a little. A lot of times with the light that I use to be able to see it by, That'll show you if it's gotten the wax melted on it. All right, I think I'm just about there. Then we'll be able to just stick it in the black. And then you don't have to seal the black. Because then that's the last color. Now, you know, if I'd wanted to, I could have done a violet or purple, but this this is the most colors. This is the most complex thing I've done to date. So I'm just curious to see what it's going to look like. Okay. And I'm just looking for blue and seeing, okay, what part of the blue do I want to cover? What part do I want to leave open so the black will cover it? Okay. All right, I think... I think I'm ready to go into the black. All right. That's done. Put that back over here. The other day, and 
uh, the other day I refreshed my black. It works better if you use nice fresh dyes. But sometimes you can put some vinegar in it and some warm water and just a little bit more. Um, good. Okay. All right. So let's see how this one. I probably should not have just dropped that in there like that. But now I'm just going to let this sit for just a moment. The black, if it's a fresh dye, usually doesn't take much. All right. Oh, you're right. You are so right, Marsha. Because you know what? Honestly, um, life without art is just work. And we are blessed that we can... have some extra time at the end of our day to do or for me finally now I have time to do my art so see when you have a nice fresh dye whew, but now you see why my hands are the colors they are <laughs> anytime you're working I know I could wear gloves but I don't I I don't like gloves on my hand I like to be able to feel stuff and the only time I wear gloves is if I'm dealing with something toxic all right so now the black has had a chance I can see the black has had a chance to work now we'll come back over here and light this oh first I almost forgot get my baggie of olive oil Drop the egg in the baggie. Roll it around. I did not know about this olive oil until recently. But it does work. What it does is it keeps, it helps like float the wax off the egg. Okay, so I just put it in a baggie and rolled it around. Now, the one thing I have to be careful here is not to catch my napkin on fire when I'm melting off the wax. All right, so here, light this puppy again. Oh, come on. I think my match, the scratch parts are getting a little old. Um, do y'all remember that matches that you used to be able to light just on a scratchy surface, like a shoe or those were so dangerous. And I remember when you could take a whole matchbook and light the whole matchbook on fire. Safety matches were not a thing back then. <laughs> so that tells our age. Okay, I've got a clean paper towel here. And here we go. Now, you have to be careful. Don't burn up your paper towel. But also, don't put the egg over the top of the flame. Put it beside the flame. If you put it over top, you can burn the egg. And then you take and start rubbing it off. And it's going to take a few But you put it beside the flame. And it has to get pretty warm. And then look. Do you see? Look what's happening. Let me see if I can turn better so that you can see it. But you put it beside the flame. You just have to be very patient. Now, some people use heat guns. And those of you who've done scrapbooking, see? See where it's coming out? Those of you who have done scrapbooking would have heat guns available. And 
You just slowly warm it up. Whoops. And rub it off. I'm going to come back a little bit so I can show you more when I get the wax off. Okay. And these are um, long burning candles because I knew I would be going through a whole lot of candles if I didn't get there. If you buy cheap candles, they will just, you'll go through a ton of them. All right, so this, it takes a while. And see now the color is starting to come through. I put a lot of wax on this egg. I'll tell you right now. That's my problem. I was so worried that I wasn't getting enough wax on it. I over waxed it. You see what's coming out? It's funny because by the time you get to the end of the egg, you have forgotten that you put yellow on there. And then when you see it, I smell fire. Yeah, I'm doing the, I'm melting off the Pasanki to show them. I, I think that I was also, it, I, I like getting the critique because if I'm teaching you how to do it, I was a little heavy handed with the white, but let's keep looking because I still think I'm, I'm learning every time. Yeah, you can see in some areas, whoops, you can see in some areas, I was a little too heavy on the white, which meant that when I, my design was too small for my ability to put on a thin line of, to put a thin line of the wax on the white. But I'm thrilled with this because this is the most ornate that I have ever done. And so this is kind of cool. I'm liking this. And it shows I am improving. And the thing is, with this kind of work, you never know until you reveal it how well you did. So it, it takes until the end for you to be able to figure out how did I do? Okay. Oh, here's some more yellow and orange coming through. Hi, Brenda. Oh, Brenda, it's so good to see you. I was telling them to go and check out your photo album on the site. You put in some great photos. Miss Brenda, she does so quilting for people, her shop, everything. And so, boy, you want inspiration? Miss Brenda, I'm sure, has done it or is about to. So, so now you're starting to see the design of the egg. You would think that the wax on it would be all the protection it needs, 
but no, it really does rub off pretty good. I'm sure it fills in some pores, but it rubs off pretty good. And that's where using like a polyurethane uh, oil base, not water base. The reason you don't want water base is you might end up rubbing the dyes off. Let me try to get some of this a little more cleaned up and show you. It's looking very lacy because I did so much of the white. And uh, so in some ways, it's kind of neat. It kind of looks like a um, crocheted. It's kind of looking a little bit like a crocheted thing you put on the back of the couch. <laughs> a doily. <laughs> And Brenda, this is Pasanki, and it's Ukrainian egg decorating. It's been around for, I don't know, a couple thousand years. A long time. It's been around since before Christ because it was a pagan celebration before, the, before Christianity came. And... Uh, just amazing. I love, that's why I don't want to, I don't want these things to disappear. These crafts and skills need to be valued and celebrated. And uh, just like Marcia said, you know, it's the best part of life is that art and celebration. Almost done. And then I'll show you and I know why parts of this are a little too white because I tried to do these really small designs well the problem with doing a small design is you have to have the light touch and the right kitska to do a fine line and if you're heavy-handed then you end up kind of obliterating the design by over waxing it or waxing it too big. The line not being delicate enough. But, but this is my most complex egg to date. So I'm happy with it. And every time I make one, I learn how to do something a little bit better. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm going beside the line. Uh, the, the flame is actually touching the egg. You get the best, but it's not over top the egg, so it's not scorching. You kind of learn after a while how much is enough so that you don't burn the egg. Okay, now almost done. Okay, oh, this is so cool. And then once you put on the polyurethane varnish and do a couple coats of it, it helps strengthen the egg because you really don't want the egg to crumble the moment you've done it. I've had them sometimes kind of blow up on me because I overheated the inside of the egg or it took me so long to finish it, the egg was kind of getting old. All right, I think I have just about melted off enough now to just show you the final. And like I say, it looks very lacy. I have done, I, especially the white, the first part. I, I love putting on the wax so much I forget that I do too much with over the white. And instead of going through the process. All right, so here we go. Let me bring this back up. All right, move that. Here is the egg. Now, here's that's a real good part, right? But watch as I turn it around. Then you will see what part got a little too white. <laughs> 
but uh, but all in all, I am very tickled. I've come a long way. There you go, Marsha. Doesn't it remind you of lace, though? Especially this, it, it looks lacy. Oh, and you know what? This one has my name. I put my name, whoops, let me let it focus. I don't know if you can see. Deb 23 right there. I put my name in it. So it's kind of interesting. I like it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. So I'm getting there finally. All right. So now I've gotten two done. Now this one, do you see doing something a little more um, calm and predictable can be a good thing. Try that when you try to get busier and busier. Well, it can get a little complicated, but I'm getting there. That's what I'm trying. All right, guys. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I can't wait to get back and have pictures of show and tell and all of that good stuff to show you. And I won't be doing a video because I am not good at videos. So I will do them as part of show and tell. Okay, everybody. And, uh, oh, I, I know one thing. I have some pictures, personal pictures. I hope maybe I, by next week I can show you. Because my granddaughter went to prom and she looked magical. Can't wait to show you. All right, everybody. Have a great week. I won't be here Thursday night, but that's okay. Uh, do something special for yourself that night. You know, just watch a good Netflix show and do something special for you. And, oh, I got wax on the bottom of my arm. <laughs> I was like, what is that stuck to me? But have a good week and find something that makes your heart happy. Okay, I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. You are the best. Bye-bye. Take good care of yourself and have a great week. See you next week if I can make... Oh, I know what. <laughs> Come on. I had... I will, there, I did it. Bye-bye, guys.